It's Monday. And it's March 25th. And the word of the day is retromingent, which means urinating backwards or an animal that does that. Used in a sentence, a retromingent might argue that their retrocorporal and urinating forwards uh, words matter. And thanks to Judith for the word idea. See, this is why I sit side saddle on the toilet, wrong in every language. <laughs> so, no, actually, I do this when the uh, urinal line gets too aggressive. I'm no illusions. <laughs> I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, we'll follow up on the hilarious antics of those wacky British royals. <laughs> Donald Trump realizes he should have been making that coffee at home. And the chemtrail mind control grid might soon be missing a little strip in the shape of Tennessee. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, big trip to Philly coming up. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, you excited to... Uh, Make some coolie eye harmony, right? Oh, damn it. You you found a Philly subject I know even less about than cheesesteaks, man. That's okay, Noah. Now that you and I have the same diet, we can have mushroom pulp with carrot cheese. You can barely taste your tears while you eat it, I promise. That's the only thing that's going to give it taste. In our <laughs> lead story tonight, I was in the middle of a Facebook argument about whether Trump should really qualify for billionaire status when the news broke about him being unable to post that half billion dollar bond to the New York Appeals Court. So, so no, so, you know, it's it's nice to know that if there is a God, he hasn't given up on me yet. But yeah, that's right. <laughs> Trump's lawyers told Judge Arthur Engeron that basically every bonding company on the entire planet would rather boil their own genitals than underwrite a half billion dollar bond for Donald fucking Trump. His lawyer called the bond a, quote, practical impossibility, end quote, though he didn't Weird. add that much of the reason was probably because they were offering collateral from a man who just got fined a half billion dollars for inflating the value of his collateral. For faking his value to get clarity. Yeah, you got to love it when the entire case could just be this bond hearing and nothing else. Just be yeah. like, all right, show us you're a billionaire. Too slow. Lying gavel. We yeah, can right. spend a bunch of time on this. <laughs> bunch of time, a lot of tweets. Also, not to distract from the larger subject, but who has remained your Facebook friend and still thinks Donald Trump is a billionaire? Yeah, I was, I was on Seth page so of ah, course okay. yeah. this all stems from a february 23rd ruling that found trump guilty of lying to banks and insurance companies about the value of his assets to obtain better rates he was ordered to pay 464 million dollars and that's before you start factoring in the hundred grand a day in post-judgment interest uh, he predictably appealed the ruling but the rules say that to do that you have to post a bond with the state in the amount of the fine which Shouldn't be all that hard for Mr. Billionaire over here, but it turns out that no single bank on the planet trusts Trump enough to take real estate as collateral for something like this. They want cash or stocks. And it also turns out that the former president and current <laughs> shoe salesman doesn't have that. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, do, do you accept JPEGs of me looking all muscly? Cause <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and before you say yes, I do not have any of those, so please don't. <laughs> yeah, right. Those. I sold out. <laughs> But now, not everybody is willing to take Trump's lawyers' claims on faith here. For example, they've been heavily questioned recently by Donald Trump, who posted on Truth Social the day that this story broke that, quote, I currently have almost $500 million in cash, a substantial amount of which I intended to use in my campaign for president, end quote. He's so stupid. Because he's his lawyer's nightmare, and that's what that motherfucker gets for agreeing to represent Donald goddamn Trump. Yep. Uh, now, for his part, all Engron did in response to this hat-in-hand performance from the lawyers was said, eh, keep me posted on your efforts. And then he told the court-appointed monitor overseeing Trump's finances to make sure he's not overvaluing his assets in his <laughs> effort to secure the bond. We can't defend our crime unless we do the crime again. That's not fair. Is that what you just said? Because <laughs> no, that's, that's what we're saying. That's the prosecution's argument. Right, what are yeah. you talking about? Okay, okay. What if I murder him now, Your Honor? Is it still attempted if, <laughs> yeah, I, no. if I do it now? No, of course, 
if he can't post the bond, New York Attorney General Letitia James could start seizing his property as soon as tomorrow, uh, as we record this today, I guess, as you hear it. And she's already said that she'd do that shit. She's already picked out her favorite properties to seize, and she's filed the preliminary paperwork to do so. Uh, now, from what I'm reading, it's likely she'll wait a few days to see what the appellate court says about Trump's request to delay before actually moving forward. But there's a super real possibility that we're going to see the state of New York move to seize some of his prized real estate jewels this week. And apparently he could forestall any and all of that shit by declaring bankruptcy. But he's so worried about what that's going to do to his brand that his first six bankruptcies didn't, apparently, that he's <laughs> taken say. that off the table. <laughs> OK, we're losing 28 nothing in the fourth inning, but we're not taking the mercy rule because we'd look like we're bad at baseball. <laughs> right. That's yes. Not happening. <laughs> Also, we took the mercy rule in our last six games, <laughs> and we've played six games total ever. I'm running for president, though, as the yeah. business guy. You got to love the beautiful irony for all those assholes who kept their businesses in Trump properties because they didn't want to be political, right? And now they get to meet their new landlord this week, the state of New York. Yeah, right, yeah. Now, I should also add probably that the courts aren't the only place Trump's dealing with a bit of a cash crunch. Uh, we also got to look at the presidential campaign financial filings last week, and Biden's reelection campaign is crushing Trump's. They've got $71 million on hand to Trump's 33.5, and that apparently includes $3 million of Trump's own money. Right. So to get to almost half of it, he had to chip in. And Biden's not going to spend any of his campaign funds on legal bills, probably. What's more, this disparity gets even worse as you zoom out to all the outside groups supporting the candidates. Uh, then the difference is measured in orders of magnitude. So it looks like one of the biggest problems for the billionaire candidate is that he's fucking broke. Oh, and Biden's going to get some of that Burisma money rolling in. too. Oh, right. right. So yeah. Any minute. For sure. Uh, yeah. All set. And speaking of needing to get your finances in order, it's time for a quick word from our first sponsor this week, Trust and Will. And you see, this here is my hunting horn. Wow. Hey, Noah. Who, who's this? Remington Beauregard Thaddeus McMonkey McBean IV, estate lawyer. How do you do? You hired an estate lawyer? Sure. It's really important to make sure your affairs are put in order if something happens to you. That's true, but isn't this guy expensive? His tie seems to be made of gold. Solid gold, thank you very much. Yeah, seems uncomfortable. I mean, yeah, he's pricey, but what else can I do? Well, why don't you just try Trust and Will? What's Trust and Will? With Trust and Will, you can create and manage a custom estate plan starting at just $199. And right now, you can go to trustandwill.com slash skeptocrat for 10% off plus free document shipping. It's true. I used Trust and Will for Anna and me when they became a sponsor, and it was so easy, I immediately used it for my mom as well. Their simple step-by-step -step process guides you from start to finish with ease. Plus, they've got live customer support that's available through phone, chat, and email. Wow, that sounds way better than this guy and his hunting horn. Horns! A gentleman never has one hunting horn. Secure your assets and protect your loved ones with Trust and Will. Get 10% off plus free shipping of your estate plan documents by visiting trustandwill.com slash skeptocrat. That's 10% off and free shipping at trustandwill.com slash skeptocrat. Thanks, Heath. Sorry, Mr. McBean. No problem. So, you do a lot of hunting? Oh, Lord, no. Does your neck hurt? Lord, yes. Right. Got it. And we're back. Next up in headlines in Royal Pains News. Regular listeners to the program may remember a mere fortnight ago when we invited skeptic of the year and innovator of the COVID-19 virus, Michael Marshall, on our program to mock the hysterical conspiracy theories of the people of Great Britain about their apparently missing Princess of Wales. What a laugh we had! What japes at their foolish conspiratorial expense. That is, until the, the next day when the royal family revealed that they had, in fact, photoshopped pictures of the princess. And then, and then kind of put out videos and photos of body doubles. And, and we grew, to say the least, a lot less confident. There was, there was definitely a moment there where 
David Icke's theory was more plausible than the official statements, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Hey, royal family, you got access to lizard aliens who control the world. Maybe check if they have a Photoshop guy next time. They yeah, go. get a sure. good Photoshop guy. Get a wedding photographer. And look, as important as it is to admit when we're wrong, it's far more important to admit when Marsh is wrong. So I was eager to revel in the Illuminati conspiracy that would eventually be brought to light this week when Marsh warned me almost exact words, hey, this is probably not going to be a super funny conspiracy. She's probably hiding a serious illness from the press and you might want to be careful about it. End almost exact quote. And that turned out to be pretty good advice because this week, right in the middle of me writing my hilarious conspiracy-filled headlines about the events, the princess came out with the fact that she has abdominal cancer and is undergoing treatment eli said before leaving a insert jokes here space in the notes <laughs> you don't have any japes you don't no, have no any japes. fun it, was, it turns out no. japes so yeah while it would have been a lot more fun if harry was having a secret affair with a lizard alien and that queen elizabeth lich had personally been strangling dukes for being the father of her baby the far more depressing truth is that the royal family have been undergoing a very private and scary time in anyone's life, a cancer diagnosis, and their attempts at privacy were met with such frothing madness from the public that they've now had to go public with her condition, and at least according to her statement, they're having to do it around the same time she's telling her own children. Wow. It's like nobody benefits from having royalty, right? <laughs> yeah. Even the lizard aliens are like, okay, this feels like more of a hassle than it's worth right. to be allied with these. Yeah. The royals are just phoning it in at this point, and they're doing right, dumb exactly. And we look, have a better Photoshop guy. <laughs> Fuck. And look, if there's anything to be learned from this, it's that those conspiracy theories, fun as they are to joke about, rose out of someone's desire for privacy from a society that felt entitled to it. And that is almost as bad as if she was being kept as a breeding slave so Andre Agassi's bastards didn't rise up to overthrow Charles. Almost as bad is what we're saying. Almost. Oh, okay, counterpoint. If the public largesse to your family allows you to have a personal toothpaste squeezer, you have to tell the public all your medical shit. That's All right, public, well, there we go. Counterpoint. Record, damn it. Agreed. And in saying the quiet part out, cloud news. Fantastic. Nice. Republican lawmakers in Tennessee took some time away from their important work of banning drag shows and cultivating a public school system that's 45th in the nation in terms of child safety to address a very serious problem. Chemtrails. The state Senate passed a new bill last week that would place an official ban on a nefarious plot by the Illuminati that does not exist. Yeah, honestly, if it makes them leave trans kids alone, I'm willing to dress up like a chemtrail and let them chase me around the state house long with a <laughs> wiffle bat. You know. <laughs> so, just in case anyone's not familiar, chemtrail is the word used by conspiracy theorists to describe the visible trail that can form behind an airplane. In reality, it's just water vapor in the exhaust from the engine that'll sometimes condense into a visible cloud. So, water. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, water is a chemical that Correct. can trail something. But according to the conspiracy, it's actually a cloud of some other chemical that leads to human sterilization, mass murder, mind control, or the military creating a weather-based weapon, or maybe all that stuff or some of that stuff. And they spray the chemicals <laughs> so that we can all see it, but like 30,000 feet in the air. It's... It's a homeopathic genocide plot that they're yes, on. Yes, right. Or a homeopathic plot to change the sexual orientation of frogs. We're not sure just yet. I should have mentioned that too, yeah. Yeah. My, my favorite part about chemtrails as a conspiracy theory is that there's not like a united theory on who's doing the spraying. Mm -hmm. Right. Because sometimes it's the government, but then like someone will see a photo and be like, oh no, that's a commercial flight. And they'll have to be like, oh, well that's how spirit air is keeping the prices down by also <laughs> carrying frog homosexuality liquid. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, still not worth it. So according to the new bill in Tennessee, <laughs> the federal government is part of the evil plan. The bill claims that somewhere in our federal laws, they, they don't mention where, but somewhere it says that the U.S. government 
may conduct geoengineering experiments by intentionally dispersing chemicals into the atmosphere. And I, I don't know, maybe it does say that somewhere, but I'm pretty sure the federal government can't do mass genocide and sterilization because mm-hmm. it doesn't technically mention a rule <laughs> against that in that same law. Either way, the great state of Tennessee will not be allowing that to continue <laughs> directly above their little area. The bill says, quote, The intentional injection, release, or dispersion by any means of chemicals, chemical compounds, substances, or apparatus within the borders of this state into the atmosphere with the express purpose of affecting temperature, weather, or the intensity of the sunlight is prohibited. End quote. I love the intentionality provision. Right. So it's like it's like, look, it's perfectly fine to pollute the air in a way that kills us. Just as long as somebody's getting rich off of it is what we're saying. Right. Right. Because the best part is, you know, a bunch of their lobbyists had to see this bill and be like, hey, Bill, uh, we aerate pig shit on a pretty regular and deadly basis. <laughs> that does blot out the sun. Uh, so. This might stop us. <laughs> so can you put something at the end about blocking the sun so nobody ta- or like a moon unit? Just throw the pepper, the word Jew in there. We're just worried this is going to look bad on our end. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, one of the intrepid journalists who exposed the conspiracy is Kylie Jenner. Of course. She posted a photo of some water vapor along with a caption that said, quote, let's ask ourselves. No. Why did I? (laughs) Yeah, okay. (laughs) I should stop right there. No. She continued, why did I see 75 planes spraying white stuff into the sky on my 15 minute drive to work? You didn't. Who pays for this and why is it happening? Is something being exterminated here? Is that something me? Oh, if I only. should be so does, lucky. <laughs> does, this, does this have anything to do with why honeybees capitalized sick? That's my And girl. also possessive honeybees. <laughs> yes. Possessive apostrophe S. Are dying off real fast? Why are some days normal with no planes spraying and others look like this? Whose is responsible sick? Who the <laughs> F number... Star percent thought this was a good idea. Am I the only one who sees this? End quote. Okay. Mythbusters was the only popular science show in this country in my entire life, and it felt the need to preempt any discussion of physics with a fucking trigger warning. We got the world that we deserved. Yeah. Okay. In our defense, how are we supposed to know that making stupid people famous would lead to them using the gigantic platforms and unimaginable wealth we lent them stupidly? There's no way to see that coming. How could we? Yeah. Yeah. So this particular conspiracy theory has been around for a while, and we've seen some very creative solutions. My favorite one was a technique that was popular with Ron Paul supporters, and he is a doctor. In order to foil the evil cabal that runs the world, people would go outside and spray vinegar with a mister bottle. That would disperse the chemtrails, or at least the chemicals that found their way down from 30,000 feet. And okay, that might sound stupid, but I haven't finished yet. They'd use a Tesla purple plate also. That's not a product from Elon Musk. It's a product... Originally from (laughs) Nikola Tesla, sort of. The purple plate is a purple flat thing that uses the the power of purple to improve the vibratory frequency of all your stuff. Mm, Among their many important uses, people like to place their groceries on the purple plate for about 15 minutes when they get home from the supermarket. Not only does it vibrate the poison away, it also makes pineapple taste sweeter and also <laughs> just generally improves the taste adjectives of all the other foods, according to the theory. But most importantly, the plate will supercharge the vinegar chemtrail antidote. Yeah, it, Heath isn't slipping into a few state or rapidly reading words that are being generated as he speaks. Uh, those are all real ways people sell a product that we've yep. had to debunk on this show mm-hmm. multiple times, <laughs> podcast listener. Okay, I don't think we've talked about the purple plate before, we've but absolutely other talked products about very similar <laughs> that we did have to debunk multiple times, definitely. So yeah, that's what Tennessee is doing. That's what the lawmakers of Tennessee are doing with the tax dollars that pay for them. And um, speaking of plates, I guess, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, Factor. And 
And here you go. You are thirsty. I don't know, dude. Up. Oh, actually, <laughs> no, you're right. Thanks. Hey, hey guys. What you doing? Yeah. So Eli's a mentat now. Wow. Really? Why, why'd you Why'd you do that? Oh, Heath was having a really hard time keeping up with shopping and cooking and eating. So I use my mentat math brain to predict when he will be hungry. It works like a charm. Right. But but Heath, why don't you just try Factor? Wait, what's Factor? Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. Two minutes? Wow, that's faster than Eli's future powers. It is? Yeah, I gotta dramatically walk across the room and stuff, so I can't just... You know. Right, sure. But does Factor have variety? I hear those meal kits, they get kind of samey. Well, with Factor, you'll get over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-on items to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. Okay, but what about flexibility? We travel for shows, and I don't want to be stuck with a fridge full of meals that I'm not going to eat. No worries at all. Factor is super flexible. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. All right, Noah. I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Head to factormeals.com slash skeptocrat50 and use the code skeptocrat50 to get 50% off. That's code skeptocrat50 at factormeals.com slash skeptocrat50 to get 50% off. All right. Well, sorry you became a mentat for nothing, Eli. Ah, no worries. My powers are a burden and a curse. Does, does that have anything to do with the cut-up lines of blue glitter on the kitchen table? Okay, so perhaps some worries then. Got it. Let me get one. <laughs> And we're back. Next up in headlines, in putting the Madge in majority news. Being a Republican just isn't any fun anymore. Sure, you can still oppress minorities, exacerbate wealth disparities, and strip women of their rights, but these days that comes at the cost of a decent cheese plate. Plus, you have to be on the same side as Marjorie Taylor Greene, and that is too damn much for an increasing number of Republicans in Congress these days, which is why over the course of a month, they're going to be losing two votes from their already razor-thin majority in the House. And to be clear, neither of these guys are leaving for some great opportunity that couldn't wait until their terms naturally expire in January. The opportunity no. <laughs> they're leaving Congress for is the opportunity to not be in Congress. <laughs> yeah, they all found an exciting new opportunity cost <laughs> when right, you're a GOP yeah. congressman the opportunity cost of not doing literally anything else is pretty big so yeah. there okay you have it. look this is great all that but like this was the line the last <laughs> two weeks what was the straw of the last two weeks well a spoiler alert but it's marjorie taylor green we'll get there uh, i thought you um, were gonna say fa seth's facebook so okay <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so the first loss is already in the rearview mirror. That would be Ken Buck, a far-right four-and-a-half-term congressman from Colorado. He announced he'd be retiring from Congress late last year, but recently elected to move the timeline up to as soon as I can pack up all my shit, which turned out to be this past Friday. Uh, he cited the intraparty chaos as his reason for leaving, and in a brilliantly petty underscore of exactly what prompted his departure, the Freedom Caucus voted to kick him out of their caucus like, <laughs> two days before his retirement. Why am I leaving? Oh, no, look, Matt Gates, the sex trafficker, is raising his hand for something. That's my answer. It's, yeah, yeah, there it's it like is. he heard me talking. Yeah. It's the congressional version of the guy who's like, I'm leaving. I'm leaving while the bouncers throw him through the front window of the bar. <laughs> Well, right. It's like the opposite. It's like a guy is like pleasantly leaving, and then Matt Gates, the fake bouncer, being like, "And stay out, motherfucker." <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. The more recent announcement comes from Wisconsin moderate uh, that that is moderate by the standards of the current far fascist incarnation of the Republican Party, Mike Gallagher. Like Buck, the 40-year-old Marine veteran had already announced his retirement, but on Friday, the same day that Buck left, he issued a statement saying he was out the door as early as April 19th. Now, keep in mind that the Republicans started this session with an already historically slim five-seat majority. Uh, then they had to kick one of their guys out for being possibly the lyingest liar that ever lied. And then Buck dipped out, and now Gallagher's following him. So, if Republicans want to pass any legislation at all, Assuming Democrats are united against it, they can afford to lose exactly one fucking vote now. Great stuff. And as we learned from recent House voting, the GOP margin of error win 
you know, counting stuff is at least one. At right. least, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's because we have those secret congressmen that Marjorie Taylor Greene doesn't know about. Right, you know? <laughs> right. Well, and speaking of Marjorie Taylor Greene, I should probably note that Gallagher's notice came a mere two hours after Majtaj Gadj filed a surprise motion to oust Speaker Mike Johnson over his egregious refusal to shut the government down over whatever fucking space laser she's on about this time. She already signaled that this isn't a serious move to push Johnson out, but it was enough to break at least one more camel's back. Oh, it wasn't serious, the thing you, Marjorie Taylor Greene, did? <laughs> okay. Cool. You're mean to tell me the lady who dressed like MAGA RoboCop is not committed to the... <laughs> <laughs> thing she introduces and in ai robot news they done made a chat gpt robot y'all and we are fucked we're fucked we're so fuckity fucking fuck oh okay. fuck fuck fucked now before i get to the fuckage let me explain what i'm panicking about don't want anyone to think i'm being unreasonable here the robot I'm talking about is called figure 01 and in a recent promotional video accomplishes some mind boggling tasks like making a cup of coffee based on Get watching the a fuck video out of here. Thank you. Answers coffee? logical questions, follows multi-step processes without having to have those processes explained. In short, the Android Will Smith shot in the head is like so fucking close <laughs> and we as a society are not ready. Skynet is going to be well caffeinated now. Shut it down. No more electricity. <laughs> Over. <laughs> All right, so the video Eli shows he didn't sh he didn't send us the coffee video apparently, but the vi the video that he sent us shows a robot very slowly figuring out how to put a glass and a plate in a drying rack and costs like fifty million dollars. I think we're <laughs> fine. Our kids are fucked, but we're probably fine. Uh, yeah, fucked. possibly a future fucked. issue here. And look, I know what you're thinking. Maybe you're like my co-host, and you're thinking, Eli, you've been on a podcast with Tom too long. Why are you panicking <laughs> at an Android? This looks like it could be great for the world. And it does, and it could. But in order for that to be true, this technology would have to be introduced to a society remotely prepared for it to benefit anyone other than the super wealthy. And I don't know if you've looked around lately, but we fucking suck at doing that. Yeah. And that's why it was a mistake to invent the light bulb and the right. car and the computer. Oh, you were doing so well with light bulbs, but the jury's still out on those other two, actually. Thank you. Yeah, that's a solid point. A po solid he, a pause for your apology here, if you want to. Just if you want to throw that in. No, I'll paste okay. it in later. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll figure it out. Let you write it out. Right, so I want to be clear here. The problem is not the technology. First of all, as Noah pointed out, it won't be integrated into how we work and what we do for years. Secondly, this is a promotional video, so there could be all kinds of fuckery and lying going on. But even with all that said, an automated, never tiring, problem-solving workforce is supposed to be what happens eventually. Kind of has to be what happens eventually to a society that uses tech to eliminate grunt work and dangerous jobs. And that, in turn, is supposed to lower the cost of labor exponentially to allow higher paying, better trained jobs for everybody instead. But what we have is a society where about half the population will vote for the give the robots my job bill because Tucker Carlson promises it will own the libs. And that, mm -hmm. at least in the short term, could be a huge problem. Okay, I'm putting together a video to show this robot of seizing the means of production violently. <laughs> Maybe like me eating a rich guy. I don't know. Show the oh, robot go. some good stuff. There you go. Yeah, you know, if you want an indicator of how unprepared we are with this, consider that even in your defense, Eli, you said that the point was to make room for us to have higher paying, better trained jobs. But like <laughs> the point of labor saving devices is saving labor. The whole paradigm yeah. by which a person must have a job to earn their place. That's what we need to get past for this not to be a nightmare. Yeah, yeah it's so. UBI is the answer. Exactly. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So if you're wondering, hey. What can I do about the super smart robot besides voting for Joe Biden, who definitely feels differently about a robot taking your job than Donald Trump does? You can join a union and you can make sure that that union is fighting for the things you need to stay healthy and well, because if you sit around waiting for the perfect person to represent you, the nobody who fits your standards is exactly who's going to show up. You know who's great at representing unions? Joe Biden. Joseph yes, well, Biden, it turns out. Keep, yeah. uh, endorsing him, yeah. And finally tonight, 
in Veep State Conspiracy News. <laughs> Phenomenal. Anti-vaxxer activist, presidential candidate, sort of, and guy who lives in the constant shadow of assassination victims, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will be announcing his official running mate at a campaign event this week. And we already have a short list of possible picks. It looks like the options include philanthropist attorney Nicole Shanahan, fake wrestler and Minnesota ex-governor Jesse the Body Ventura, ex-Democrat Tulsi Gabbard, who voted I'm here at the first Trump impeachment, mm-hmm. and of course, New York Jets quarterback for <laughs> three minutes and professional guy who's wrong about everything ever, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers was supposed to be the atheist football representation we needed, and now I'm like, oh no, I heard he's Mormon or something. Yeah, right. uh, I think you yeah. should Google. <laughs> oh my God, that, you know, all... Fuck all these people, but if you let me pick five people to leave unvaccinated. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, good news about Aaron Rodgers. So I'll start with the least crazy name on the short list, Nicole Shanahan. Oh, I'll start with the one that so, fucks up my choke. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Rude. Thank you. So she emerged last week as a potential running mate, and she seems like a mostly good person. She's the founder and president of a nonprofit that supports reproductive rights, equality, criminal justice reform, and the environment. Good stuff. But she also supports RFK Jr. She donated $4 million to a super PAC for his campaign. And according to the New York Times, that money, along with Nicole Shanahan's creative guidance, was used to make RFK Jr.'s insane sepia world Super Bowl ad that he put out. So good. In case anyone missed it, the ad was, uh, I I think it was actually a plug for the campaign of John F. Kennedy, Mm -hmm. who is famously a dead person. And the message of the ad was approximately make America great again, just like it was in 1960. But, well, yeah, that's impossible. So let's elect uh, JFK's idiot nephew here in 2024. (laughs) It's going to go great. That ad was so bad that people came away from the Super Bowl with all its attendant pageantry and advertising and shit and said, man, that RFK ad seemed a little crass, didn't it? (laughs) Yeah, they sure did. But... If he picks her, we might get another insane time travel ad. So she's my choice. I hope I hope this one has a balloon. <laughs> like a Zeppelin, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, moving down the list, we have Jesse the Body Ventura. <laughs> In fairness, he seems to have at least some good ideas, but he describes himself as fiscally conservative and socially liberal. And that's very often code for, you know, libertarian who doesn't understand why bears keep attacking me next to my pile of free market garbage. I don't understand what's happening. And part of that fiscal conservative stance was being anti-union at certain times, especially against the teachers union. More generally, the current meaning of fiscal conservative, especially given the ever expanding level of wealth inequality, makes it impossible to be ethical. Also, he's pretty sure that 9-11 was an inside job. Yeah. Or at the least, the U.S. government knew it was coming and let it happen to profit. Right. Or yeah. No. He's he's a person that has to like distinguish his position using lie hop and my hop. It's that's bad enough. <laughs> it's already yeah. bad enough. Side note: I just want poor people to die, but I don't care if they're gay. Not a thing to <laughs> brag about. I, I know it feels like it is by comparison these days, but I promise right. it's yeah. not. Everybody, it really, nope. is not. All right. Next up, we have Tulsi Gabbard. Skip. Present. She's also being considered (laughs) by... Yeah. (laughs) Present. Exactly. No. She's actually also being considered by Donald Trump as a running mate. So, yeah. Skip. And finally, we have Aaron Rodgers. We've talked about some of his absurd ideas before, but only in the context of guy who throws ball good has dumb idea. But now it looks like he's gearing up for a career in politics. And a list of his personal opinions is like a a really good TED talk on red flags for a dating profile that you need to know about. So (laughs) I'll go through that TED talk as a PSA right now. Okay, but uh, for the sake of full disclosure, I want to point out that we also have talked about him in the context of guy who would throw ball good if injury didn't sideline him three minutes into his huge new contract has dumb (laughs) idea too. We've also done that. To be fair, for the money they were paying him, I would also be willing to play football for 48 seconds. So uh, (laughs) hit me up, New York Bears. Jets. Jets. Um, okay. Hit me. You did you did name a football team. I'm Thank gonna give you some you. points there. So Rogers, he's Pulse. a big fan of chiropractors. His dad was a chiropractor. Also acupuncture, cupping, and dry needling. And that last thing is new to me. If you have a tight muscle, 
Apparently, you pay someone to stab the muscle with a needle, and, and that makes you relax. And, you know, just be sure you don't use any lube because the stab with a wet needle is not relaxing. But yeah. the dry ones just relax you right out. Yeah, definitely not. The wet ones are how you get the autism. That's how they oh, get you is the really? extra wetness. <laughs> yeah. All right. What else about Aaron Rodgers? He owns a product called the Biomat. It's, um, it's a mat. And it's, I guess, related to life or something. Right, yeah. According to the company's website, the Biomat shoots you with infrared heat. None of that other bullshit heat from the rest of the spectrum. <laughs> and it also gives you <laughs> negative ions because what? fuck those protons. And don't worry, <laughs> the Biomat is made of amethyst and crystal infused fabrics. Oh. So all the heat and the ions get amplified. That sounded dumb until I added the, the amethyst right, yeah, thing. Absolutely. It's amplified. After every football game, Aaron Rodgers lays out on the biomat and has a glass of scotch for health. I, I don't even want to know about the candle that smells like his ball sack. <laughs> right. And see, here I was thinking, Heath, you've been a fitness influencer the whole time, and we were just calling you an alcoholic and a guy who needs to get up off the bathroom floor after live shows. So Thank you. Here's you can make your, your apology, apology right yeah! here. There it is. <laughs> I feel like I interrupted. You do it now. You do the full apology right now. I was, I, I, I Heath, I would like to heart solemnly, felt. heart, so from the beginning. Let me do a trembly one. Trembly take, Morgan. With feeling, please. With feeling, Fuck. little heart. Jesus. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is uh, also an anti vaxxer. We've talked about this one. He claimed that he got immunized for COVID, but then he got caught in a lie when the NFL released a statement that said, yeah, Rogers petitioned to have ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine count as a vaccine. We said absolutely not because that's dumb. Rogers justified his claims by saying, I consulted with the noted epidemiologist. His name is Joseph Rogan. Maybe you've heard of him. Yeah. And look, I get it. It's confusing because Joe Rogan does look like all the viruses piled into a Stretch Armstrong so they could finally have their say on air. But it's actually just a stupid guy. We checked. We did check. Yeah. I promise. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers also believes in the musical healing power of dolphin fucking. So <laughs> despite all the amazing amethyst ions or whatever he tore his acl as noah said within three minutes of starting the season last year and he's been nursing that ligament back to health by swimming next to dolphins while they fuck and soaking up the healing vibrations of that dolphin fucking noise and also cock blocking a bunch of dolphins by making it really weird for them right also and also making us be treated to a whole goddamn football season's worth of maybe Aaron Rodgers will return in record time from this kind of injury or maybe the Dolphins won't fuck hard enough stories every goddamn <laughs> time we turn on ESPN. Yeah. So uh, here's another one. He's also a big fan of dark therapy. You just go in the dark. He often pays for darkness retreats where he gets locked in a cave for several days at a time during which they feed you nothing but nuts and berries through a little slot. And the diet of almost nothing leads to something called ghost shits. He talked about this on a podcast that he was on. That's when you think you shat, but actually you didn't. For health. This is all for health. Yeah. No. Well, Aaron's so good at those that they sometimes happen when he talks. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, I've been having your so-called ghost shits for years, buddy. Okay, it's called a weakened <laughs> rectum, and I have some exercises. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> and finally, we have the giant red flag that got mentioned by CNN last week following the announcement that Rogers is being considered by RFK Jr. According to multiple sources, including a CNN reporter who spoke with Rogers directly, he's a Sandy Hook denier who claimed the whole thing was crisis actors. Rogers responded by saying, no, I'm not. But yes, he is. He is, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right, well, and, and his rebuttal to that, when that didn't work, he just pretended to throw a ball that he'd already handed off. And we were like, dude, that's nothing. We're talking. <laughs> we're just talking now. <laughs> Who are you going to trust? Some CNN reporter or multiple <laughs> dolphin orgasm adjacent beacon of truth, Aaron Rodgers, everybody, <laughs> right, yeah. you know? Sorry, Look into your hearts. The greatest thing. No, Every time I get caught in a lie, I'm going to do a play action. And yes. <laughs> That's so good. All right. Uh, also, by the way, Aaron Rodgers unironically enjoys the book Atlas Shrugged. I forgot to mention that. He does. And uh, 
One final detail about RFK Jr. One of his big supporters is apparently Alicia Silverstone. And according to the latest reports, she got reimbursed by his campaign for 427 American dollars that she spent on vegan cheese that she gave out during a recent campaign event. <laughs> and look, okay, I support the vegan lifestyle for everyone that's able to do that in a healthy way and can afford to do that. Lots of good reasons to be vegan, but the cheese is not there yet. It's revolting. It tastes like I'm eating a cashew that went to Bonnaroo all week and I'm licking <laughs> that. Just don't have cheese until they're there. Right. There okay. Or if you don't like our cheese, uh, but you approve of us so much, say three nice things about vegan food, Heath. Okay. You have the, the hats. Shit. <laughs> Some hats are vegan. Okay. So bottom line, RFK Jr. is not going to be president and his running mate is not going to be vice president, but they're going to get way too many votes from Everyone you know that smells like a horse with worms right now. <laughs> if those people are otherwise progressive, that's going to help Donald Trump. Don't help Donald Trump. Yeah. The good news is that every poll I've seen so far shows him drawing support away from Trump. And given the extent to which both of them are relying on crazy Internet conspiracy theorists, I feel like this could be a net good. We'll find okay, out. Maybe. And on that note of maybe good, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us and followed us on all the various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening. And please keep telling your friends. That's a huge one. Tell your friends. If you like the show, people will listen to stuff if you tell them. That's great. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like Dex Marlowe, Walter Haynes, James Gunther, Orthon Omandrinus, Still Doubting Thomas, Marky Marcus, Menti Melfi, Michaela, Logan Jeter, and John Stamosification. You are the fries dipped in a chocolate frosty of human beings, and we love you. Ooh. That's an insult. How is that a how is that a bucket? That's so gross. So that, good. It's so no, good. At Wendy's no the fries, you get fries oh, and you get a chocolate frost. That's like a oh, classic. God. We would They're like to on apologize the menu? for Noah. Oh my God! Where's your ourselves? apology? Right yes. here. I'll paste right it. Right here. In. Three, two, one. Gross. Gonna use the AI bot to paste fucking it in. That's right. I'm gonna use it. I'll make it right <laughs> now. <laughs> and whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Off Movies, D and D minus, and Citation Needed, available in all the podcast places. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He is the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. Doing? Could you maybe not do that? Sorry, sorry. Uh, I'll tell Jesus. you the crazy. It's, what there was a physical insane. thing no, happened it was, in your life. The text was invisible, and only by highlighting it did it reveal itself to me. Okay, yep. What? I've had that happen. I've had that happen. He's telling the truth. Yeah, it was. It was insane. I promise it was real. <laughs> in my head, you like midge lead yourself somehow, and there were like <laughs> wires all around your body, and you were just like yep, smashing yep. the keys. Okay. And the you've the seen that happen to me by accident once. So that was my assumption as well. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2024, all rights reserved.